We gather this day in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit, be with you all. Wonderful words for us today from Isaiah the prophet. Say to those who are frightened, be strong, fear not. Here comes our God to be with us. And at that day, the deaf will hear, the blind will see, the, the lame will leap, and and our tongues will be loosened to praise God. Come, come, the Lord awaits us to open our eyes and open our ears, but most of all, to open our hearts. And the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Now again, Jesus left the district of Tyre and Sidon, and he went by way of Sidon to the Sea of Galilee to the district of the Decapolis. And the people brought him a, a deaf man who had a speech impediment. And they begged Jesus to lay his hands upon him. Now Jesus took the man off by himself away from the crowd. He put his fingers into the man's ears. And spitting, he touched his tongue. Then he looked up to heaven and he groaned. And he said to them, Feta, that is be open. And immediately the man's ears were opened and his speech and pediment was removed and he spoke plainly. Now Jesus ordered them not to tell anyone, but the more he ordered them not to tell, the more they proclaimed it. They were exceedingly astonished and they said, he's done everything well. He makes the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. The gospel of the Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Well, one of the world's oldest jokes. A guy walks into the bar with a, a banana in his ear, and the bartender says, Hey, Mac, there's a banana in your ear. And he says, I can't hear you. I got a banana in my ear. I, I didn't say it was funny. I just said it was old. <laughs> yeah. Today I want to talk about hearing and listening and then finally the ability to speak. But the difficulty is we're kind of like the fellow who was married for 10 years and after 10 years of marriage went stone cold death. Couldn't hear a word that anybody spoke until one day his wife caught him in the, in the basement in the corner listening to the radio. Of course he could hear. Most of us can hear, the difficulty is that that it's very hard to hear, hard to hear a number of voices. Probably the hardest voice of all is the voice of God when God speaks. And yet we are told from the moment of our conception to the moment we draw our last breath, it's God who always speaks first. And God is constantly speaking to us, but we can't hear him. And if we can't hear God's voice, then how in the world can we hear the voice of those around us? of those who are speaking to us. And so the question is, why? Why? Why can't we hear? And I think the answer is noise, pollution, noise pollution. You know, in the land of the blind, the man with one eye is king. In the land of the deaf, well, we all walk in the land of the deaf. And the reason it is so hard to hear is because there is a cacophony of sound around us all the time. And even if we're not hearing that cacophony of sound around us, the television that is constantly blaring, the radio that is on, the internet that addicts us to itself, then we are constantly bombarded by thoughts that repeat themselves over and over and over again, and they never end. So much so that we can't hear anything else, that we are so caught in our thoughts and in our ways and our ways of thinking and what we think our ways of seeing. And it becomes addictive. We are addicted to the noise. Remember when I was a baby priest in a little rural black community in Hopkins Park, Illinois, I picked up a young African-American adolescent who was hitchhiking and as I was driving him home, he said, can I put the radio on? I said, okay. Well, he put on this most God-awful, funkadelic parliament music that would just 
curl your hair, and I was going bald at that time already. After a while, I just went, click, I turned it off. And he looked at me, he says, may I turn it on again? I said, no, you may not. We're gonna drive in silence. After about another minute or so, he says, would you, would you mind letting me out of the car? And I did. He got out of the car and he put on his Walkman because he couldn't stand the sound of silence. And yet until we are able to silence ourselves and silence our world, we cannot hear the voice of God. Until we are ready to silence our thoughts, it becomes almost impossible to hear the voice of our sisters and our brothers because of the noise pollution that comes into us. Just as we can't see the stars at night for all of the light pollution around us, so we cannot hear the voice of God or the voice of others because of the noise around us. I think we've got more of a prejudice against hearing than we've got a prejudice against seeing. At a certain age, all of us are gonna be wearing glasses, at least for reading, until we get the cataract surgery. At the top of my glasses, it's all clear because I got a new set of lenses in there. But on the bottom, I still need my reading glasses. You know, if you need glasses, you've got no problem. There's no, no shame in going to the eye doctor to get a pair of glasses. But when it comes to hearing, I don't know why it is, but we're, we're embarrassed when we have difficulty hearing. And we don't even want anybody to know that we may be wearing hearing aids. So the big thing is, how do we get hearing aids that nobody can even see that we're wearing them? And, and they're always advertising how small they are and you can't see them and no one even would dream that you have to. What's that prejudice against hearing? Well, today, Jesus is giving us a set of hearing aids, ways to begin to hear. And of course, the ways, once we can truly hear, then, then maybe we can listen. You know, hearing seems to be a physical thing. Listening is a whole different animal. And I think in many ways we are even worse at listening than we are at, at hearing. And so we've got this wonderful gospel today. He's, a, he's in the Decapolis, which means he's in in Greek territory where there's all kinds of merchants going on and all kinds of hustle and bustle and, and think of a, a crowded downtown area or a, a great marketplace where all kinds of people are doing commerce and there's all kinds of noise around. And they bring him a man who is deaf with a speech impediment. You know, you can't speak if you can't hear. Or if you hear muffled, when you speak, you're going to speak muffled. You're not going to hear the plosives or the guttural sounds or the, the distinct sounds that need to come out of your mouth. And so you're going to speak not well. First, you've got to hear. And so what's the first thing Jesus does? He takes him off by himself away into the quiet, into the silence. And when he gets into the silence, he's now going to give him what he has. And what does Jesus have? Perfect communication between his Father and himself. He hears every word the Father speaks. As a matter of fact, he is the conduit of God's voice. You want to hear the voice of God? Well, listen to Jesus, because he is the incarnation of the divine. He is, the, he is the divine in the flesh. Now, he's fully human, absolutely, but he's also fully divine, which means that whenever he speaks, he's speaking God's word and speaking with God's power. He is now going to give this power to this man. He's going to do two things. He's going to take his saliva, and you know our saliva is, is, is a healing property, believe it or not, and he, it, unless, you know, unless, unless you don't want to spread COVID, don't do that, you know. But it, it does have a healing problem, you know, where very often, oh, in, in, in some African cultures, the mother will chew the, the food first before she gives it to the baby to help start digesting it. And so the food is easier to digest. That We find that very, very foreign to ourselves. But so he takes his own stuff, his own spittle, he puts it on the tongue of the man, he's going to open his lips, 
And then what he's doing, he takes his fingers and he puts them in the ear. He's plugging himself into the man. He's now going to give him his own power. And then he groans. You know, St. Paul says the spirit groans in ways that we don't understand. It's a primitive sound. And, and it's one of the three places that we're going to hear out of Jesus' mouth, his native tongue, Aramaic. We're going to hear it when he raises the little girl from the dead, Efeta, I mean, a little girl from the dead, Talitka Tukoum, come on, a little girl, get up. We're going to hear it from the cross when he says, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, Lord, why have you forsaken me? You're going to hear it now, the third time. And he says, Efeta, it means be open. It's a big radical statement. And one of the reasons we can't hear one of the reasons it's so hard for us to hear one another, one of the reasons we are always talking past each other, and boy, we are really talking past each other right now in our culture, is that we, we're not open. Our minds are made up. We've got our vision. We've got the lens through which we see reality. Don't confuse me with the facts. We're not open. So his, his words are powerful, be thou open. And then immediately the man could hear. Now, once you can hear, now you can speak. And Jesus says, don't, don't go telling the whole world because they're going to come out here and they want to see some kind of prestidigitation. The message is much deeper than that. But of course, they go out and they spread the news all over the place. Now, what's the message for us? What are the hearing aids God wants to give to us? Well, it's pretty much the same. It's pretty much the same. We are caught in this cacophony of noise in which each and every one of us lives. The addiction to that noise, which we can't get out. Sit down with your teenage grandchildren, and what are they doing? They're staring at that screen. They can't get their eyes off that screen. It truly is an addiction. And as long as they're being fed that stuff, nothing else can get in. So we've got to go off by ourselves too. Oh, I pray to God that each and every one of you have some time during the day or make some time during the day where everything gets turned off. You know, I'm a, a news junkie. I'm an NPR junkie. I like to listen to that morning edition and all things considered. Lately, I've just been turning it off. Because I really need to do what? Quiet down. Listen. What are we told? Be still and know that I am God. Be still. And you're not going to know until you are still. And then we can hear that small voice of God. When Elijah was looking for God in the thunder in the mountains, he couldn't find him. He only found him in the whispering breeze of the wind. And we are only going to be able to hear the voice of God in that whispering, quiet voice that speaks to the very depth of our being, not in words, sometimes in groans, but it's the Spirit that is speaking into our hearts. Now, once we can hear that, now we're ready to encounter our sisters and our brothers. And I've said we, we're talking past each other. We, we seem to be in two very distinct camps. We have two very different mindsets, two very different lenses through which we see reality. And when somebody is saying something to us, especially if it's something we don't want to hear or disagree with, it, we don't hear them. The reason we don't hear him is because we are spending so much time right now thinking of our counter-argument by saying, yeah, but what about, what about, what about ism? And then we're going to defend our position. So you got two people babbling at each other, never hearing each other. And worse, we should not be allowed to speak our position, our point of view. And you know, whether that's a political point of view, whether that's an, a relationship point of view, when we, when we are six and sevens with a relationship, when we're not sure if we're raising the grandchildren or the children in the right way, whatever it may be, until we, until we are able to hear the other. And one of the, the really good techniques to use in, in when I find myself with somebody that I really want to converse with is first, before I can even speak, I have to listen. 
And I've got to be sure that I've heard what they said. So a wonderful technique is to say, all right, let's, for example, what if you want to talk about the vaccination between those who are really into the vaccination and those who are really anti-vaxxers? Those are two very, very different positions. And right now it seems to be really separating us a great deal. Well, what you need to do first of all is say, tell me your position. And if they've got reasons why they are afraid of the vaccination, you need to listen to them. And one of the ways to be assured that you're hearing is to say, now I hear you saying, and then whatever it may be. And if they say, yeah, we, we hear that, now you have a right to speak and to share your point of view. And they need to say, I hear you saying. Now you might not come to a conclusion, but you've communicated. And it hasn't been this war that we continue to fight with each other. You see, the great goal is that we all be one with each other and that we all be one with our God. That cannot be until we learn to listen to each other, to hear each other. Oh, in the land of the blind, the man with one eye is king. In the land of the deaf, the one who learns to hear and to listen has something to say.